I will be the one taking electricity. So under electricity, we are going to start with electrostatic. Now, what is electrostatic? From our previous knowledge, we know that electrostatic is what? From the word electron and static. So we already understand that static is when something is what? When something is at rest. So when we have a stationary object. But now in terms of electron, so the study of electron, the study of charges at rest. That is what we mean by electrostatic. So we are familiar with the fact that if we have our fluid that is made of terrain uh, or nylon, so there will be what? There will be cracking sand. And also, if we dry a very dry air, if it is cold, then it will produce a uh, cracking sand. So this is due to the fact that what? It is being electrified by friction. So if we have a body, if we have a different body and they are being run by each other, then they are going to provide electric charges. So, and these charges, they are going to what? They are going to transfer charges to each other. Any object, we, are, we normally have what? Neutral object. So this neutral object is containing what? Both positive and negative. So if you rub two things together, so charges can be produced uh, from, we have different ways in which you can produce charges. So we are going to talk about that one later. So now, we said that what? Uh, when an ebonite rod is rubbed with four, or a fountain pen with a coat sleeve, then it gains the power to what? To attract light bodies. So if it is so, so it, it will gain the power to attract a light body. So, and again, electro, we said that electrostatic means the what? The static electri electricity. So, and a type of electric that does not move from one point to another. That is the uh, meaning of when something is at rest. So, um, we are going to talk of ebonite rod also. So, if an ebonite rod is rolled with four, and it will not create electricity. But what will happen? So, it will, it will just transfer electric charge from the what? From the four to the ebonite. So the two of them, they will transfer electric charges from one uh, to one another. So for example, a negative charge from the four to the rod. So a negative charge, it will transfer a negative charge from four to the rod. And this leaves the four with an equal amount of positive charge. Because the four and the rod were originally neutral. The two of them, they are originally neutral. Then if we rub the two of them with each other, so the, it will, uh, the leaves of the four will be what? They will have equal amount of charges. By what? By friction. Because anytime we are rubbing something with each other, we already know that friction from our previous knowledge, we know that friction is when we have, uh, you can simply say friction is the uh, distance between the separation of two objects. Let's say that I have something like this, then there must be friction between this and this one. So the friction uh, is the one that is enabling this object to what? To stand on this. Like the way, let's say I attach any object to this now. Then there must be friction between the two of them before this object can stand on this. So assuming there is no friction, then every object, if we have something like this, let's say we have a reduced friction. So if any object is fall on this plane, what will happen? Then the thing will continue to uh, to fall. So that was the basic knowledge of friction. So then if we are rubbing anything to each other, there must be there must be friction. So if we go and look at the uh, the uh, the friction, how friction normally occur. So we know from our previous knowledge, if we are talking about the advantage, the disadvantage of friction. So we are talking of we say that what? So if a car, if suppose the car or even human being Suppose there is no friction, then all of us maybe will have been falling. So that's why friction is very important. So if we are rubbing any object to each other, so let's say they are neutral before, then in terms of electric charge, the two of them they are going to transfer electric charge to one another. So it doesn't mean they are producing electricity. It's just that they are what transferring of electron from one to from one of them to another. And we said that there are what. There are two different types of charges, 
the we have what we have positive charge and we have a negative charge. So a glass rod and a rub. If we rub a glass rod with a what with a silk, what will happen? We are going to have a positive charge. So they will repel each other. And if we rub a four with uh, if we comb our hair, we rub it with our hair comb. If we use a comb to to uh, to comb the hair, there will be what production of charge is due to friction. So which will produce a negative charge. So with that, we know that we are having two charges, positive and negative. Then what will happen to this? This positive and negative charge, if we have a positive charge and we have a negative charge, if these two charges are, if two, two charges are attracting each other, the positive charge and negative charge they are going to attract one another. But if we have a positive charge and also a positive charge, so it will what? It will repel each other. That's why we have the general law that says that like charges uh, repel each one another, while unlike charges like charges repel while on large charges they attract so that's the basic knowledge of electrostatic field now in this electricity how is electricity being produced we know that electricity is uh, very important to human life so as we all know even high that i'm standing is because of there is uh, electricity production of electricity i'm undergoing production of electricity in my body at Art for art to be beaten, then there must be what electricity. So for us to be working, there must be electricity. Even we are already we are being uh, we are used to all these electric appliances. So all the thing we are using in our house, uh, we see we, from there we have seen the importance of what the importance of electricity. So how can we even define this electricity? So we all know the definition of electricity, but what I will just say here is that electricity is just the what? For us to have electricity, then we have some property that we must we must understand. The first property is that we have what we call a conductor. We have conductor, insulator, and we have semiconductor. For us to have production of electricity, then there must be what? There must be introduction of conductor. And we all know what conductor is. Conductor is a material that, uh, that can uh, that allow the passage of electricity to pass through it. So the perfect example here is we can have what? A metal, which we all know. Metal is a perfect example of conductor. We have many examples of conductor. Even human body is an example of conductor. And we have what? Uh, the human body, the metal, and, and so on. We have so many examples of conductor. So if we have a metal, so there will be what? There will be transferring of charges. There will be transferring of charges from one form to another. Let's use this as an example. Let's say that we have a cooking pot like this and we heat this thing. So if we generate heat to this, to this, then let's assume I take a metal, I put it inside this thing. Then there will be what? Less than in a few minutes, we see that this metal will not be able to, to take it with our naked eye. Because of what? There is uh, this electricity, this uh, heat that is generated to this pot. It will what? There will be vibration. There will be vibration, and then this thing will transfer from one form from the heat, from the below to the what? To the above. So, and that is what we know now as uh, conduction. So now, then this heat that is being transferred to one another, how is it being transferred in it? So I just want to use that to explain. So it's the same thing with electricity. Before we can have electricity, then there must also be a transfer of something which is what we call what? Electron. There must be transfer of electron before we can have what? Before we can have uh, electricity. And this transfer of electron is just, uh, we can just say electricity is the transfer of electron to the what? To the conductor. So, and this electron that is transferring is what we call free mobile electron. Because before electricity can occur, then we have two types of electrons. There are some of electrons that are, that, are, uh, that are not moving. 
So those ones they cannot conduct electricity. But the free mobile electron, the electron that are moving, they are free to move from one place to another. Then this electron will be transferring into the conductor before they can generate electricity. So and we know insulator. We know that insulator is just a material that we want. So we are to insulate something. And the perfect example is if we have, let's say we have blood, so there is no passage of electricity. If we have an insulator, so if you cut, if there is an insulator, then electricity cannot pass through it. So also semiconductor. Semiconductor is just a material that, uh, that is in between uh, conductor and insulator. Sometimes they act as conductor and sometimes they act as insulator. So we are familiar with all this. Sorry, I forget uh, to even mention something. Before this, uh, I said that we are going to talk about the production of charges. Production of charges. In this production of charges, there are three ways in which you can produce charges. So the first way is, we said that by friction, We have by friction, by induction, and by what? By induction and by contact. These are the methods in which we can produce electric charges. And earlier we talked about the uh, rubbing of four, rubbing of uh, rod with silk, coming of air, all this one, if we are rubbing any two bodies to each other then we are producing friction. We are producing uh, electric charge by what? By friction. So that's just the perfect example for friction. Then we can also produce electric field due to induction. So we, induction means that if we have two rods, so and we take the two rods, we take it near to each other. So since the two rods, they are not in contact with each other, then there will be what? The, the rod that have the charges will induce a charge into the other rod. So which will not affect each other, then they will just transfer this uh, electron to each other. Let me just use this as an example. Let's say we have a rod like this. Assume we have a rod that contains a positive charge. Then let's say we have two, uh, two flags that are in contact with each other. Let's say this is A and this is B. So, initially, these two charges, they are neutral. And this sort is sort is a positive charge. Now, what will happen? If we take this sort near to these uh, two flags, then there will be what? The rod, this rod, let's say rod C, it will induce a charge into what? Into A. Then what will happen? If it induces a charge into heat, then this one will move very close to this one. Because the initially inside this thing, there is what? If we have a neutral charge, it means there is positive and negative inside the, uh, the rod. Then if, we know, if this one is inducing a positive charge, into this uh, flux A, then the positive charge inside this one we leave the it will leave this place and it will move into the flux B. So it will now remain a negative charge inside A. We are going to have a negative charge. Then the for the B we are going to have what? We are going to have a positive charge here. So what has happened here is that there is sort of induction from C to A. This one induces a charge to a flux A. Now, and this one there will be what? There is contact between A and B. So I can just use this as an example for both induction and contact. So because of the contact between these two, uh, these two flux. Then this one we also have a positive charge in, uh, here. Now if I remove this one, then there will be distribution of charges in A and the distribution of positive charges in B also. 
If I remove this sort, there will be distribution of charges, negative, okay, negative charges. So in A, and also in B, there will be distribution of positive charges inside. So we can now see that here we now have negative charges and we have positive charges. But initially it is neutral. So because of what? Induction, we can now have charge and because of uh, contact between A and B, we also have a positive charge here also. So now, we now understand that uh, we can produce charges by induction, by friction and by contact. And there is also another thing that we should know. If we want to detect a charge, so we can, there is a material that we normally use, we call it electroscopy, Electro, electroscope. We normally use this guy to detect a charge in a body. So if we want to know a charge, uh, in the body, we call it electroscope. So now, so uh, this will be the end for uh, electrostatic field. So we are still going to continue. Please like our video and share it to share it as much as you can. Thank you.